Hey, and welcome back to episode 7 of our Let's Play Calamity Mod Rogue playthrough on expert mode. So, um, while I was off screen, I got uh, a few upgrades, a couple maybe. Um, the lionfish was found in the depths of the abyss. Um, most of my abyss dives I am not going to be putting on camera. They are very hard to see for me as a player, and I can't imagine what they're going to look like on video. So I will kind of either jump cut or skip past it and just let you know what I found and when I found it. Uh, I will tell you that I earned this one. Uh, ended up diving deeper and deeper into the abyss until I was almost in layer three of four. Um, which is normally meant for hard mode, uh, layer three, uh, mid to late game hard mode, I think. Uh, but yeah, I had to work for this one. Um, I got pretty much most of the other shadow chests in the abyss besides the, uh, the lionfish and, uh, yeah, definitely well worth it. You can see the damage there, 114 with the godly, uh, uh, enchantment. But, this thing is awesome. It will do exactly what it says it does. It essentially um, stacks the Venom debuff on a mob until it gets up to like 300, I think, damage per second, um, which is huge. Uh, most most mobs don't survive that long, but on boss fights, that's amazing. Um, it's it adds so much damage to the fight that here we can test out this little piggy. Come here, piggy. All right. So normally this would be somewhat lengthy fight, but as you can see there, 36 damage a tick, and during a boss fight. That is amazing. Um, that really could be a game changer um, in some cases. So I do remember stumbling across this weapon in uh, another playthrough that I did um, that I didn't, I never recorded. But it was instrumental in me defeating the next boss, and that is going to be the slime god, <clears throat> and. This is a fun fight. Um, it consists of um, three different slime enemies. And you can kill all three or any of the three in any different order you want, but there are repercussions for doing it out of order, so to speak. So what's going to happen is there's going to be the slime god itself, and then two of its counterparts, minions, children, I don't know how you want to say it, but... Basically, you want to kill the Ebu... Ebulin Slime and the Crimulin Slime first, so that it's just you and the Slime God, because if you kill the Slime God itself before you kill its children, then they both enrage, and they move faster, do more damage, spawn more children as the fight goes on. It's not a lot of fun. Um, this is not necessarily an endurance fight where it's going to last a long time, but it's not a very quick fight either. Um, it's going to be somewhat lengthy. It starts to prep you for what you can expect in hard mode and post Moon Lord uh, as far as fights go. Um, it's a um, Calamity Mod boss itself. So it's a little different than what most people experience when they play the vanilla game. But I actually love the fight. Uh, it's one of my favorite fights in the game. Um, and so I think without further ado, we're going to buff up and start the uh, first attempt. And hopefully this is our only attempt of killing it. Here we go. So as the fight goes on, so there's the slime god itself. You can see the Slime God, and then we have these two big dudes. These are the guys we really want to kill and focus on. Um, 
before we focus our attention on the actual slime god itself. And, oh my god, not doing so well. The problem with this fight is uh, when you get hit by the slimes, they leave a debuff on you, and that's damaging in and of itself. But, additionally, and we're gonna die here, I can almost guarantee it. Oh, sweet Jesus. Uh, additionally, the, uh, the bosses leave little mines throughout the battlefield. There we go, we died. Um, so this is a very tricky fight. I may need to expand my arena a little bit, but this is kind of difficult. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't prepared for this level of action at this time. And as you can see, I wasn't, you know, just died pretty quickly. Um, but overall, I mean, this is a fight where you have to focus your attention on, on many things at once. Not only do you have to avoid damage at all costs, as you can see, but you also have to um, you have to hit multiple targets, and you have to be very specific and very precise with your aim. And for a lot of people, and sometimes admittedly, including myself, um, that can be very well overwhelming. Um, it it is a very welcome challenge, I think, at this phase in the in, in the game. But uh, you know, I think for me personally, this is where I try and gauge my my skill as a player uh, and how I've progressed throughout the that certain playthrough. It lets me know where I'm at and you know it doesn't it definitely doesn't lie. Um, you're either ready for the fight and you're ready to tackle it or you're not. You know, there's really no in between. So I'm gonna pick up a couple of rage potions to boost my damage. Wrath, I think I got at least two of each. Good. Don't see anything else here. Heart reach really isn't an option right now. None of the other stuff matters. Oh, heart reach is an option, but uh, I'll pick up a couple of those. I was thinking of life force. <clears throat> life force boosts your overall health by 20%, I think. 25%, something like that. Um, uh, it, it's really awesome to have, uh, but I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Um, like most of the fights that we've gone through, uh, you've either mastered the fight and you're going to survive with minimal buffs or you're going to die in the blazing glory. And unfortunately last time it was a ladder option and I died quickly. Um, but we're going to start attempt number two here. Come from that side this time. So, like I said, this fight is interesting to me on so many levels. And if I could stop getting hit, it'd be great. Additionally, when you get hit sometimes, you get debuffed. And it makes you float uncontrollably. And usually that comes from the slime god itself. And it's not a fun debuff to experience because you really can't control your, your height. And a lot of Terraria, especially the Calamity mod, is about control. You know, speed control, damage control. Um, you know, you basically are in the position you want to be in at all times. And when you lose that ability, it's not fun. that damage boost up for a second. Try and talk a little bit less and fight a little bit more. This is a fight that requires full attention. So apologies if I'm not talking so much. Yeah, I am going to zip out of the arena for a second. This is one of those fights where it doesn't matter what biome you're in. Only that, um, you know, 
you're just fighting. It's pretty simplistic. Like I said, this is one of my favorite fights. Unfortunately for me, it's very stressful. At least at first. Uh, once you get some of the weapons from this boss, and later on, it becomes way more fun because it's a little easier. A lot easier, actually. If I could stopping stupid and hitting something that's stationary and not moving. So much better. As you can see, I've, I've unfortunately hit the slime god enough times where he's almost dead. And that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll end up paying for it down the road. It's Rob and Peter to pay Paul. Um, but, you know, this is... I think we're almost done with this fight, actually. This guy's going to be almost dead here pretty soon. This is what I'm saying. The lionfish is so amazing as a weapon. And there we are. Slime God's been defeated. Uh, when you see that, it also means that his children have been defeated. Not to count their spawns. And you see me sliding around, and that is because of... Oh, where is it? Yeah, this. Really annoying. By the way, I always get rid of it. First thing. So, that was the Slime God. Um, let's see. Overloader Blaster. We're going to end up selling that. Mana Loader. Selling that. Um, static Refiner. We're going to keep this for a special crafting. The Mask. We're going to keep just as a trophy. But yeah. Um, you know, that's Slime God. It's, uh, it can be a messy fight, but, uh, I think we're going to move on here really quickly. I'm going to zip back to, uh, base, kind of put some stuff back in the inventory, and we are going to move on to the Queen Bee. Uh, let me get organized and get settled, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. Uh, during the jump cut, I killed the queen bee, realized I wasn't recording, so here we are yet again, proving just how much of a novice I am at this whole video recording thing. So, um, one thing I will say about this fight um, is with a lot of poison uh, attacks. Uh, this bizarre that can be found in the jungle and crafted, I think, with Calamity, uh, is extremely helpful. Uh, you still take the damage from getting stung by bees or hit by the stingers, but you eliminate the damage over time aspect after it, so that you basically just take that initial burst of damage and that's it. So you don't have to worry about your health getting sucked away from you uh, after you get hit. Um, and it, it's very, very useful to reduce the amount of damage that you take in. So, uh, we're going to get to this fight. It's going to be pretty easy. Uh, Queen Bee is just more annoying than anything else. So, here we go. Uh, there's a couple different phases of this fight. Um, first and foremost, the opening, as you see, basically has her just charging at you. Uh, as the fight goes on, she'll charge faster and faster. But then she will s position herself above you and attempt to hit you with stingers or bees, some summons. But uh, the, the bees you can obviously aim upwards and take care of in a reasonably fashion. Uh, the stingers, the ones you have to kind of dodge uh, or just take the hit like a man and burn her down. Uh, we're well over geared for that fight, so it, it's a pretty easy fight. Most of the reason why I like doing the Queen Bee fights are because of these, the Bee Nades. Um, you also get materials, I think it is Bee Wax and Bottle Honey, if memory serves. Let's see how good my memory is. Bee Nade. Nope, just Bee Wax and Grenades. I had an anvil uh, to make more grenades, uh, bee nades rather. Uh, these bee nades are insanely helpful against the wall of flesh. 
uh, as they release a stream of bees and they home in on the enemy. So where that comes into play during the Wall of Flesh are with his little tendrils that are called the Hungry. They are a little bit annoying throughout the fight, kind of deadly. Uh, expert mode, it kicks it up a little bit of a notch and the Hungry actually respawn as tiny snakes throughout the fight. So not only do you have to worry about outrunning a big wall of flesh, you have to worry about dodging tendrils and as well as any other natural terrain and mobs that spawn during the fight. Um, as we'll see, I think that is going to be next episode of where we fight the wall of flesh and start putting ourselves in a hard mode. Uh, as I may have referenced before, I'm going to do a little bit more fishing in preparation for a hard mode. Uh, one of the things that I stress more than anything else are fishing runs where you get lots of crates. Uh, I always advise people to hold off on opening said crates until you get into hard mode because once you open them up in hard mode, regardless of when you obtain the crate, it matters when you open it. So if we open it in hard mode, there's a chance that we'll get hard mode ores and hard mode weapons and hard mode level money, I think. It increases the money that you get out of it. Either way, it's all a great way to um, kind of give yourself a tiny little boost once you get into hard mode. The transition can be pretty ugly sometimes if you're not prepared. So giving yourself every opportunity to um, succeed uh, without having to expose yourself too much to the... Uh, the harsh uh, world that's now suddenly way harder uh, is always a bonus. So you want to try and do whatever you can to give yourself an edge because the hard mode is pretty unforgiving the first couple times you do it. And uh, yeah, giving yourself the, the ability to jump into the hard mode level armor and weapons right off the bat if you collect enough of the crates is always a plus. So uh, I think we're going to end the episode here. It was yeah, a little bit on the short end, but, um, you know, there's a lot of preparation I got to do off camera to get ready for the battles and ahead. So, uh, I am going to be busy in the meantime, but I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.